Why don't we start with you telling me exactly why you're here? Well, I just failed my driver's license test for the third time in a row. And I learned that if you're in Switzerland and you fail three times in a row on your driver's license test, you have to go for a psychological evaluation. So I just figured I should talk to someone about it. Seems a little excessive and slightly nutty. No, it's not nutty. What's, what's nutty is that in this country, you can fail and fail and fail and fail and fail and fail and fail your driver's license test, and then somehow, just by pure fluke, you can get it, and then it's yours for the rest of your life, even if you're a true danger behind the wheel. In fact, that's really why we're on this television show right now. We're not on a television show, that's delusional. We are so on a television show, and I am the host of it. You see, what we do is we take the lousiest motorists in the country, then we train them, then we test them, and then in the end, one of those lousiest motorists is named... Canada's Worst Driver. This year's nominees for Canada's Worst Driver have a wide variety of motoring issues, especially when it comes to speed and their understanding of it. Do you think they're gonna beat me there? That's Crystal, a shameless, intentional speeder. I'm gonna race them. Speed limit's 50 up here. Crystal's flagrant disregard for speed limits Slow it down. Seems destined to get someone killed. Crystal, you're going 150. Crystal's brother, Stephen, has had enough of her reckless behavior. I drive really fast because I don't like driving. I just want to get off the road as quick as possible. The next Canada's Worst Driver nominee is the polar opposite of Crystal. See, this is like a normal thing, and I'm scared. Slowpoke Lou is always under the speed limit. I want to get off this road. Okay. Lou's husband, Derek, has never seen her drive a hundred. Derek, this is my kind of road. The next Canada's Worst Driver nominee... You have to do the speed limit, please, because you're going to cause... Okay, I am! I am! Go, speed up! ...has also never driven a hundred. Give it gas! So tell I'm 80! Chantal nominated her sister, Daniela, as Canada's worst driver. Oh, my God! The next Canada's worst driver nominee... You want to speed up, sir? 55. ...is understandably paranoid about going too fast. I am not much of a speeder now at all. Mike was hit head-on while the woman who is now his wife was sitting right next to him. Seems odd standing here almost 13 years later. The final Canada's Worst Driver nominee never looks at his speedometer unless his wife tells him to. You're still speeding. How am I speeding? Because it's only 50 through here. Tyler's inadvertent speeding is one of the reasons his wife, Jana, insists on being there whenever he drives their daughter. Sometimes when my dad's driving, it's very scary. It's time for Canada's Worst Drivers to play Know Your Speed! For this game, they'll drive this mobile home, which has had its speedometer blacked out, down this kilometer-long runway. Here, we'll ask them to go 30K an hour, then 50 through this section, then 70K an hour through here. Do Canada's worst drivers know their speed? Crystal's brother wants her to do this challenge without her cell phone. And that's not going over well. You can suck it out with your big mouth. You can keep suck talking. it. You can suck my Get out of my RV. I'm not driving with you. You're a piece of 
I'm not doing this. No, of course. You're going to run away. Yep. Yep. Potato. I think on my six years on the show, I have never seen this level of anger and outrage and just pushing and blaming and putting responsibility on others. That's Shamala Kiru, our on-site therapist. She, alongside legal expert, Cam Woolley, high-speed driving instructor, Philippe Letourneau, and our head driving instructor, Tim Danter. Help me decide who graduates each episode. At the end of our series, this panel of experts will also help me name Canada's worst driver. There's so much more going on with Crystal than what we see here. Ooh, what is that face? I'm not driving in this thing with that thing. Good Lord. What's going on there? No, he's he's like you. He's you, Junior. Oh, I'm challenging and her, and she no, doesn't like it. I'm not driving with him in the car. I refuse. So okay, if, if that's what it means, I won't drive it at all. I don't care. Sure. Um, it, it, the drama over nothing is actually tiring. Okay, well then, see you later. Come here. No, We're teaching you to drive instead. No, Come I'm here. not doing it. It is. No, Andrew, I'm not doing it anymore. You're not being nice to me again. Just come back so we can get this done. It's just a, it's a follow-up to yesterday about, about then say how sorry. fast you're going. I'm sorry about what? Say sorry for being mean. I wasn't mean to you. F it. Just come back, Crystal. It's a simple little driving test. I'm not driving today! Somebody come pick me up! Uh-huh. She could easily be the most dangerous driver we've ever had here. And she wants to continuously make it about other people. All right, bring on the next participant. Tyler has a tendency to unwittingly speed. Do you look at the speedometer enough as a driver? Yes, I try to as much as I can, yes. Uh, no. No? No, because, like, I don't know how many times we've gone through the school zone. I'm like, you got to do 30, you got to do 30. And he's like, even though I tell him he's, I, you got to do 30, he's still going to do the 42 or 44. 30 by the first red and white barrier, so you can go whenever you're ready. Okay. We have a camera on the speedometer, which Jana is able to monitor. And you're watching, you see it on the screen, right? You know where it's at. And right about here, I think, feels our comfortable 30. Tyler's actually doing 42. All right, now speed up to 50. Headed for the 50 zone, Tyler hits 70. You're there? Yeah, I think I'm there. Hold 50 through this. And now for the end segment, speed up to 70. In the 70, Tyler does 90. That's 70? I think right about here, 70. Okay. What do you think you did? You think you did it perfectly? I think I'm, I was within, within rounds, yes. Tyler drives way faster than he thinks he drives. Oh. That's, that, that's, wow. I didn't realize that. Daniela, who usually goes slow on purpose, has no idea if she actually comprehends her speed. Do you know how fast you're going without looking at the speedometer? No. This is probably about 30. Daniela is going 40. And then pick it up to 50 by these. Okay. In the 50 zone, Daniela goes exactly 50. This seems like a 50. And by the 70 zone, she only gets up to 60. How do you think you did? I think I did okay. Odd. Daniela is fast when she's supposed to be slow, and slow when she's supposed to be fast. That's not too bad at all. Mike believes he is good at monitoring his speed, but trying to go 30... You think you're there now? Yes. Mike is going 20. Tell me when you think you're at 50. Yes. Mike is at 35. And when he thinks he's going 70, 
Yes. Okay. Mike is 60. How do you think he did? Mike? Is so. So what does that mean? What does that information tell you? I think I'm too cautious. Lou is even more cautious. Yeah, I think I'm at 30 now. Lou's not even going 20. It's maintain, 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 maintain. This feels kind of slow to me. Lou's at 30 in the 50 zone and 50 in the 70. Lou is the slowest person here. So I'm a little slower than I think I am. Yeah. Yeah. When we come back, everyone learns how to reverse a trailer. Uh, uh, it's getting way better. And Crystal explains why she thinks I'm not good at my job. So let's talk about some of the downfalls of that old geezer, okay? Too harsh. The drama over nothing is actually tiring. Okay, well then, see you later. It. Come here. No! We're it. you to drive instead. No, Come I'm here. not doing it. Before the Know Your Speed Challenge... Crystal? No, Andrew, I'm not doing it anymore. Crystal had what can only be described as... A millennial hissy fit. I'm not driving today! Given her chat with Shamala yesterday, that outburst was fairly predictable. You identify as a millennial? Yes, I am a millennial. But here's the thing. It's like old people like Andrew have a problem accepting that millennials feel like they want to be treated differently. And millennials have a problem that old people don't want to do that. And so with Andrew, I, I find a lot of conflict because in his generation, it's always like, just take it, suck it up and make the change. But in my generation, that's not how we think. Millennials are, are not all the same people and we all want to be taught differently. That's really not possible with driving. Driver's education, regardless of how it comes to you, is standardized. There's some very standard... No, I'm not happy with that. That doesn't make sense. You don't have to all, like, you can teach someone how to drive in different ways. Some of the things that we know in terms of the downfalls of uh, millennials, there's a tendency to seek instant gratification. Absolutely. Um, there's a tendency towards entitlement. Sure. Less adaptability and rather low resilience. Okay, so let's talk, I think I have high resilience, actually, high as True to her resilience, Crystal comes back to the Know Your Speed Challenge course. You came back! How's it going? Fine, thank you. Good. Uh, you ready to do this one? Not until you give me an apology first. For what? For being too harsh with me. Be, be more specific. What, what did I say that was harsh? I would like an apology for you, specifically with the way that you talk to me. I talk to Crystal in a way that might change her dangerous behavior, and she knows she needs that. Listen to what she said the day we met her. At driver's rehab, I need to learn control. I really feel like I need to get slapped in the face with some kind of shock that's going to teach me in a safe environment what is going to happen if I keep driving like this. Um, without an apology, I'm not doing anything on your show. All right, fine. So, uh, do you have anything to apologize for? Why is it so hard for you just to apologize for being mean? Because it's I haven't been mean. Okay, time out. I can't, I can't keep talking to you right now. So, let's just say I'm going to do the challenge. Okay. I will continue with your show, and I will do this stuff for you. And however it plays out, it plays out. But I want, like, a real apology. Let me just get in this car. Let's just do this. All right, cool. I'm not interested in fighting with Crystal on any level, but she's still trying to lure me into a scrap. Well, you could yeah, at least sir. be nice. Like, that's the problem, is that you're, like, so harsh. Like, I understand that that's how your age group does things. I don't get what you're talking about. 
it's even just like your face and the way that you say things and your tone and like where's the stupid keys can i it's, start this car yeah sure start. i'm trying to save your life thank you yeah thank you for coming back and and, and doing this so you, your target is 30 kilometers an hour okay instead of going 30 crystal accelerates past 60. that's 30. that's 30. okay and then up to 50 for that This is 50. That's 50, is it? Okay. Not okay. Crystal's past 90. Okay. And then we want to be going 70. So a little bit more. Slow down for me and stop. Slow down easily. I have no concept of speed. I already know that. I Crystal has some serious work to do. See, every time I think I'm going 70, I'm going 100. Yeah. So that's why I keep on talking to you about uh, changing certain behavioral patterns, because that's super dangerous, not just for other people, but for you as well. <laughs> Thank you. I love you, you sorry. freak. <laughs> You're a freak, too. I'm sorry I drive so fast. I'm sorry you think I'm mean, even though I'll I'm not. <laughs> Oh, oh come oh, on! God. Love it! Love it! No, can't you ever just apologize for that? <laughs> mm. The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers will be no picnic, I'll tell you that. See, what we're gonna do is we're going to have them reverse a trailer. And that is just mind-bendingly weird because everything's sort of backwards. You see, to make the trailer go to the left, this is my left. They have to steer to the right. This is my right, right? It's sort of as confusing as trying to figure out which direction you're looking at when looking in a mirror. Right? Right. This is my right. Which means all that's left is to guess which way you'll steer to the left. Right. Right. I hate backing up trailers. I just despise it. It's one of my worst things I ever did, you know? We weren't going to teach trailer reversing this year, but yesterday, Tyler asked for it. You want a trailer course? Yes, sir, I want a trailer course. Seriously, man, show me how to back up a trailer. I have a trailer that's been in my driveway for over a year and a half, because I don't, and I haven't moved it. You know, come. Because it's just one of these problems I can't figure out. Tim Danter figures anyone can reverse a trailer if they just know a few tricks. Put your hand down at the bottom of the steering wheel with your thumb out. Which way is your thumb pointing? That way, it's my left. Whatever way your thumb's pointing, when you turn the way the thumb's pointing is the direction the trailer's gonna go. Are you serious? Tim is always serious. Steering this way is to the right, which will make the reversing trailer go to the left. Oh, wow, what a good trick. The next trick is to stay in constant motion. We want to keep the car in motion as we're steering because it gives us immediate response, therefore we can have easier correction and we keep a flow to it. Yes. Let the car roll and see what happens. If you go too far without making a correction, you'll experience something known as a... Jackknife. 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 Oh, jackknife, what does that mean? It means you're <laughs> To get back in alignment, simply pull forward. I'm never gonna get this. You are. Yeah, but I don't understand it. Like right now, you guys are gonna make me go do a stupid challenge and now I'm gonna fail. Daniela may not understand it, but everyone else does. Oh, I backed up a boat. Look at that. Look at that. Excellent. Hey, high five, buddy. For the trailer reversing challenge, Canada's worst drivers will use this van to push this trailer into that garage right there. Tyler will go first because he's the guy who's had a trailer stuck in his driveway for a year and a half. And it has, it's full of garbage, you know? While Tyler gets going, Jana explains to me the details of her husband's worst traffic accident. He got a scaffolding pole, metal scaffolding pole, went through a sheet of plywood right into his skull. That impact resulted in a permanent brain injury that up until now, I've been unaware of. I didn't really realize that Tyler had a brain injury. 
but that's why he drinks. His brain slows down and he doesn't get as angry because it doesn't, he can't rev himself up. Really? Yeah. Tyler! Yes? You seem kind of perfect going backwards in a straight line now. I, uh, it's getting way better. Better yet, Tyler threads the trailer successfully into the garage. Dude, who's gonna not have a bunch of garbage in their driveway? Me. Tyler passes flawlessly. He nailed it on his first try. When we come back, the rest of Canada's worst drivers try to park the trailer. What the f did I hit? Canada's worst drivers are reversing a trailer into a garage. I'm, this is a big step in my direction, you know that? Deadly. Learning that skill. Oh, I backed up a boat. Did not go well for Daniela. I just suck. Daniela might still pass this challenge because after her frustrating lesson, she Googled trailer reversing. After the training, I literally sat there and watched a whole bunch of videos about how to do this so I could not embarrass myself during this competition thing. I'm using my thumb. Okay. Is that what? Yeah, no, Chantel, just, I need some silence here, because I failed the training today miserably. I know, but I'm just trying to... I don't want you to talk right now. Okay. Thanks to the power of the internet... I'm just go that way. Turn it this way. Daniela succeeds. You're in. Chantel, this is huge. I failed the training miserably, so the fact that I did this... Like, I think you're going to blow Dad out of the water when Shut the up! Maybe we should fire Tim and replace him with Google. Oh my God, I'm in. <laughs> I did it. Mike is worried about this one. It looks pretty good to me so far. Two minutes later, it looks even better. Yeah, baby. This success means Mike can go shopping. I'm going to get a trailer for yard work. Lou's husband owns a trailer, but for the last half hour, he's only been confusing her. I know I need the trailer to move that way. Yeah, which means you need the front of the trailer to go that way, right? No, that... Yeah. I, I know what the car is supposed to do. I just don't know how to get it there. Okay. Lou fails but does get parked after I remind her of Tim's tricks. I really don't see what the big issue was. She needed to pull forward and then back in. Did I just park a trailer? <laughs> Congrats. Thank you. Crystal is failing this challenge, so she decides to go off-road. Well, you're in a field. You're now in a field. That's not the road. It is to her. It is to her. This is the sense of entitlement she has, and it's driving me bananas. Am I gonna hit the... Oh. What happened? Crystal got stuck. That's what happened. I don't want to do this anymore. When we come back... Canada's worst drivers are tested on their ability to navigate an icy corner. No, 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 no! Ah! You know, there was a time when people thought that if they started skidding on ice, they should pump the brakes. Of course, that was the same time period when people thought that a business in the front, party in the back hairstyle made sense. It doesn't. We know that now. Mullets are wrong. And pumping the brake is wrong. Up next for Canada's worst is learning what to do when they start skidding on ice. Of 
course, now that we know not to pump the brake, it doesn't mean we actually know what to do with men's hair. Our high-speed instructor, Philippe Letourneau, will now explain that if you're skidding towards something, Nothing. and you want to turn away from it, you have to take your foot off the brake. Nothing happened. What's going to make you take your foot off the brake? Mm -hmm. Vision. Look yeah. where you want to go. Look where you want to go. Look where you want to go. To let go of the brake pedal, this is the tricky part. You here. have to look into the open, not at the objects. Thank you. Another problem that often occurs during prolonged skids is oversteering before releasing the brake. If the wheels are turned like this, mm -hmm. it takes a while for their grip to come back. But the, you agree with me, the straighter mm -hmm. your wheels are, mm -hmm. faster they'll start to mm -hmm. come back with the grip. So that will be very important for the challenge, okay? okay? That important piece of information. The less steering you do, more turning you'll have. Is something Philippe makes sure every driver understands. Less steering, less steering, less steering in that case will mean more turning. If all the drivers do as well in their challenge as they do in their training, that was better. Okay, I got there we it. go. They will all pass. Lock up, steer, release. Oh, yeah, look at that. I knew I could do it. Yeah? Yeah. One more time. One more time. Yes. For the Icy Corner Challenge, drivers will be in our brand new Mustang, which came with ABS, although we've disabled it. ABS stands for Anti-Lock Braking System and it prevents the wheels from skidding when severe pressure is applied to the brake pedal, thanks to a computer that makes the brake calipers grab and release a brake disc at such high speeds, the vehicle slows down, but never skids. One of the few downsides to ABS is a vibrating, jerky feeling that comes up through the driver's foot when it's activated. To pass this challenge, Canada's worst drivers have to hit this synthetic ice at 55 kilometers an hour. Then, lock up the brakes. Then, do what must be done to get around this corner without skidding into the wall. In Scandinavian countries, they make, they force, they demand that people get ice training before they get a full driver's license. Here, oh no, we'll just give a driver's license to anybody. <laughs> Here we go. 55 kilometers an hour, that's 40, that's 50. Five is right there. So I get all my wheels on the ice, I lock up, I let her go, and I go, go around, go around, go around, go around, go around. Oh, holy just. On the turn. I did have my doubts, but I made it because I kept my wits about me and looked not at the wall, but at where I wanted to go. Will Canada's worst drivers pass this ever so difficult yet all important challenge? We're about to find out. Tyler drives a truck that has no ABS. That's right. I took it out. Really? No, I don't like that jerkiness. You know. Huh. Hold on a second. Why is it activating in the first place? You have to be aggressive on your brakes in order for it to engage. He wanted to get rid of that feeling and get rid of the problem. Rather than changing the behavior. Exactly. Have you ever slid on ice in the wintertime? Yes, I have. Last year, I slid off the road three times. And were you on your brakes all the way through when that happened to you? Oh yes, I was on my brakes all the way through. On his first two attempts at our icy corner, oh, Tyler's on his brakes all the way through. Oh, then, dramatic oversteering. 
which Tyler has warned not to do, is the cause of his failure. So far in rehab, the trailer reversing challenge is the only one Tyler hasn't failed. You have to learn from your failures, right? You have to learn to be wrong. Because that's how we always become right. Man, I'm just choking out here, man. It's frustrating. Really, really frustrating. Daniela knows what to do. I'm going to go 55, hit that, break as hard as I can, look where I want to go, and steer all at once. And let your foot off the brake. Yeah, shut up. I think she's gonna stare at the wall and smash right through it. This is her first attempt. Here I come, here I come, here I come. Off the brake, off the brake, oh, left, shoot. left. I did it. I'm all the way to the left. Did you look left? I looked left. She doesn't look left. She turn her head left, but her eyes keep, keep looking at the wall. This is not looking left. This is turning your head left but looking at the wall. She also turned the wheel as far as it would go. Left, I did! I'm all the way to the left! Look at how much steering input I gave the car on my successful run. So I get all my wheels on the ice, I lock up, I let her go, and I, oh, go around, go around, go around, go around! Oh, holy just! <laughs> now look at how much Daniela steers on her second attempt. Uh-huh. On her third and fourth run, it's the same story. Now I'm going to go like this. I didn't take my foot off the brake! Oh! I can't do that many things at one time! On all five runs, Daniela oversteered and overbraked. I just can't do hard tasks. When we come back, the rest of Canada's worst drivers attempt to pass the icy. All I did was slam on the brakes, locked up the wheels, and slid. Canada's worst drivers can't navigate their way around an icy corner. That was not fun at all, man. Lou fails all five of her runs. So I get in the car with her. So what you want to do, lock up the brakes. Yep. Release slowly, turn, look at the same okay. time. Release slowly, turn, look at the same time. Keep on turning okay. as you go, slowly. Okay. No, don't do this. Okay. I bet you she's going to get it with Andrew. If you took away the wall and the fake ice, even Canada's worst drivers wouldn't steer full to the left to come around this turn. And that's where they're all going wrong. A little bit fast, that's good. Walk, but really slowly, and turn, 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 turn. There, that's how you do it, that's how you do it, you see? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I, I, <laughs> I did it, I know it's not past, but I'm so glad to do it, because now I know what it feels like. Every Winnipegger should really learn this lesson. Right? Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Mike is off to a terrifyingly fast start. You're doing 70. Oh, I have a bad feeling suddenly. Look where you want to go! That's oh, fast. Oh, oops. Way too, too fast. fast. Way too fast. Way too fast. You're not the speed freak here. What the hell was that? Yeah, I'm still nervous. Here's Mike's second attempt. Watch Mike's eyes on his next few runs. His speed is fine. But on his second, third, and fourth attempts, Mike focuses his gaze on the wall he's trying to avoid. And that fixation on the looming danger makes Mike stay on the brake and skid through the wall. 
drive me bananas. Nobody is passing this. Nobody. Come on. Here's Mike's fifth and final chance. Mike may as well drive to the hair salon and get a mullet. Just look at how his brake lights reveal that he's pumping the brakes. Mm. Cannot hit the brakes at all. Perhaps. Mike should move to Fiji. Well, it makes me never want to go on ice ever. <laughs> it's kind of hard not to do, considering we're Canadian, hun. Crystal has been instructed to, under no circumstance, go faster than 55 on this course. Oh, I'm going 60. It's okay. It's not okay. No, 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 no! On her second attempt, Crystal speeds again. No, I'm going 60. And again, she pumps the brakes. But then she does something even weirder. No, you pressed it again. No, I didn't. No. At the last second, Crystal turned her eyes towards the wall. And that made her steer towards the wall. So where are you gonna look on this run? Gonna look around the corner. Look around the corner. Don't stare at the wall and drive into it. Look where you wanna go, and for heaven's sakes, don't speed. Here's Crystal's third attempt. This time, Crystal's wandering vision makes her steer back and forth even more dramatically. No, I turned, I didn't turn, I didn't turn. Crystal is the most dangerous person here this year because her car handling is exactly like her behavior. Break. One, one, one. Where you want to go? It's okay. This has to stop. So, I sit in with Crystal. Look at that nice gentle takeoff. Let's go, let's go. That's not big. No, you gave up. You gave up and turned back. You were going to make it. You have to have patience when you're ice. You gave up right at the end and turned at the wall. Crystal was destined for success this time, but then she once again looked at the wall and turned into it. When we talk about driving safely, we talk about one thing over and over and over and over and over. What is it? Look where you want to go. Did you do that? Not a f chance. On a physical level, Crystal just doesn't get it. Well, conceptually, I get it. When we come back, Canada's worst drivers plead their case for graduation. Are you Canada's worst driver? Maybe. maybe. Do you think I'm Canada's worst driver? Aside from just doing rehab center challenges during the last few episodes, all the nominees for Canada's worst driver also did public drives with Tim. I don't want to be on here right now. Now, our experts are waiting to hear from the bad drivers about who should graduate. Starting with Daniela, who used Google to help her pass the trailer reversing challenge. Kudos to you and, and for going and doing that. And, and I wish more people would take your line of action when they don't get something with driving and go and research it. I wish it was that easy for highway driving too. Maybe. How was being on the highway with Tim? Oh, terrifying. You couldn't leave here now today and go out drive on the highway or could you? I would kill somebody if I did. I would probably black out and kill somebody. 
obviously then you don't want to graduate yet. No. Like, I want to be able to, but I know I can't. Okay. I don't think I'm quite ready yet. I would like to stay here for as long as I can continue getting the knowledge I used to have. Do you think you're Canada's worst driver? Definitely not. Crystal might be Canada's worst driver. Does she think she is? No, Tyler is. <laughs> Tyler actually agrees with Crystal. I am Canada's worst driver, and I'm not going to give up. You know, no matter how much it makes me want to cry, it's not going to happen. What makes you want to cry? Well, being here is like a really good opportunity to learn how to drive and make myself a better person on the road. This episode, the shortlist created by our experts for potential graduates, only contains one person. Mike. So that is one extraordinarily short list. Mike demonstrated to me some good initiative on the road. You've driven on the highway with him or no? Yes. You have? Yes. And how was he? It seemed second nature to him. There are no red flags to me with, with Mike at this point in time. And is he the only person who you'd say that about? Yes. Shamla? The only one that I think could graduate is Mike. Do you think he should? I do. I think we've given him everything that we can at this point and that he's ready to go on public roads. However, he still doesn't want to graduate. We've got a long-standing tradition here to not graduate people if they say, no, I need more training. Mike's just here because he wants to be. The rest are here because they really need to be. We could keep all five of them again. for the sixth episode of Canada's Worst Driver Season 12, which means it's time for someone to graduate, get their license back, and go home. Or does it mean that? Last episode, we didn't graduate anyone, and we could do the exact same thing again this episode. So, the question is, is someone gonna graduate this week? Yes, because I'm positive. Yes, someone is going to graduate this and week. And no, it's not going to be me. Hell no, it's going to be the person who deserves it. Which, Mike, is you. Oh. It is. Start believing in yourself, Mike. Thank we you. all believe in you, man. Here's your license back. You actually did it, man. And you deserve to have that back. Okay? Before coming to rehab, brain-damaged Mike... Keep it on the road, please. ...was a potentially lethal driver. This is the railing at the pizzeria that I hit. Mike hit the pole at the gas station. I drove into this guardrail. One reason why Mike hit so many things whoa, whoa. is that his everyday vehicle is simply way too big for him. Do you ever use it as a truck? No. Get rid of that thing and get a little car. That sounds like a great idea. Well, I'm confident now to get home get rid of my big truck and buy a smaller vehicle that's going to suit my needs better. In rehab, Mike proved to have better reaction abilities than I thought he would. That was awesome. And he passed more of our high-speed challenges than anyone else here. Perfect. With your help, I'm getting back to normal. Oh, Congratulations. Baby. I love you. I love you, too. Congratulations, Thanks, don't cry, but do sell your big truck so you get a smaller vehicle that you can manage when you get home. Yes, sir. During our next episode, the teaching will continue. And at its end, we will be naming the finalists for Canada's worst driver. On the next episode of Canada's <laughs> worst driver. I know where the center is now. It's in the middle. The remaining nominees' tight space vehicle handling skills are tested in the cross. You're going to break the car. No, I'm not, Chantel. They learn how to do a reverse 180 degree spin out. 
You hit the wrong pedal. And we let them decide how big the gaps should be between foam figures. A slalom course we call... Oops. Know Your Limits. I think I'm gonna throw up. <laughs>